This is Halcyon, the furthest colony in the galaxy, proudly owned and operated by corporations. Everything we have, everything we are, we owe to them. The Outer Worlds needs to be good. We need an awesome new RPG with real role playing and real choices. Can the Outer Worlds do it? Can it be the hero we need? What is up guys, my name is Scott and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today, we wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about our high hopes for Obsidian's upcoming RPG, The Outer Worlds, and touch on some of the recent news shared by Obsidian. It's easily one of my most anticipated games this year and it looks to be like a refreshing entry into the RPG genre. Our hopes are high, but from what we've seen since E3, The Outer Worlds is likely to be just what we need this year when it launches on October 25th. 2019 is a a quieter year for gaming. This year's E3 revealed a lot of promising titles and gave us a deeper view at things we knew about, but very few of these games are set to release this year due to the new consoles looming just on the horizon. The fact that it's releasing this year is just one reason why The Outer Worlds is such an anticipated release for fans of Fallout and RPGs like ourselves. A deep RPG with multiple planets to explore, relying on player choices to push your story forward. With Cyberpunk 2077 now finally given a release date of April 16th, 2020, there's ample room for a focused and semi-open world RPG to shine before the juggernaut follow-up to The Witcher 3 lands. Saying that Outer Worlds is 2019's best looking role-playing game is a pretty fair call, sitting relatively unchallenged amongst the multiplayer shooters and narrative experiences hitting towards the end of the year. It's why we have high hopes for The Outer Worlds. We're optimistic for a game that draws from many of the RPGs we've lived for years, updating features from those to feel fresh in a 2019 release. Many of the games we still love and cover date back to 2015 or earlier. There's been quite some time. A lot of the bigger RPGs that have been released since have opted for limited player choices in the pursuit of story or focusing purely on combat and stat trees. While variation of gameplay and combat style is definitely appreciated, we here at Fudge Muppet love to really take our characters to the next level, with backstories and builds to truly play our own way. It's excellent to play as Geralt in The Witcher, for example, but sometimes it just really is more fun to be a character of your own creation in a brand new world. We want to be anyone we want in the world. I want to be able to be a suave pacifist or a dim-witted brute, a serial killer who loves dogs, or a gallant hero who is deathly afraid of fires. And Outer Worlds is looking like it might be that kind of game. In order for any RPG to satisfy our desires, it has to offer a world with plenty of interesting backstories and reasons to explore. After all, we don't travel off the beaten path because we have to. We do it because the world of games like New Vegas are so interesting that we want to spend time learning about it. We're long overdue for the next Skyrim or Fallout, and the history of the development team behind Outer Worlds seems well equipped to tackle the challenge. Simply put, The Outer Worlds needs to be good because it has so much going for it. The history of the studio, the timing, and the hunger of the audience for the player-driven RPG experience. Thankfully, from what we've seen recently, the game truly does look promising. Let's dive into why from some recent news. Firstly, the worlds and lore of the game are already very interesting. If this is your first time hearing about the game, here's the basic gist. Set in an alternate history future, The Outer Worlds tackles humanity's expansion into space with a dark sense of humor. The player begins the game in a cryosleep, a passenger on a deep space civilian transport ship lost for 70 years. You're awoken by Phineas, a scientist miraculously surviving what usually would be a fatal deep freeze, and from there your story begins. Being able to kill the very man who woke you up soon after shows that Obsidian truly wants to give the player command over the story, even one with murderous intentions. We know very little about the corporations, the board, and even the rebellion, all of which will be ripe with stories and characters to dive into and explore. The planets of the Halcyon system are able to be explored while not entirely open like a No Man's Sky or Skyrim, they will each have large open world areas to navigate. We are yet to see all of them, but the environments shown seem to vary greatly and all have a great pop of color and personality, likely due to the care put into their production. The whole game conjures up a feeling of the American frontier, amping that up with space environments and rampart consumerism for a compelling setting. 
As we discussed in our previous Outer Worlds video linked in the description below, the choice to make smaller but more handcrafted open sections of the world is a good one in our eyes. We'd always prefer 20 to 30 hours of exploring an interesting system of environments over 60 plus hours of a world that feels repeated or uninteresting. Think about how Knights of the Old Republic 2 was about a similar length but it had so much depth and quality. The corporations and the outlaws that form the primary conflict of the game are a welcome dynamic and allow for some entertaining world building. While the aesthetics of the world is definitely a little fallout owed to Leonard Boyarsky and Tim Kaine's work on that series as a whole, it does stand on its own two feet as unique, taking the vintage style of the historic early 1900s and mixing it with future science fiction means that the colour and vibrancy of the world set it apart from the darker, radiation soaked fallout wastelands. Leonard Boyarsky cites the Coen brothers, Deadwood and Firefly chiefly as some of his influences and tonally these seem great places to start creating a universe like the one featured here. In a recent interview, Leonard Boyarsky gave an insight into what we can expect from the story. There will be two main paths for the games, fighting against the corporations that have come to rule or joining the board who rule over the corporations. While these seem like the mainline good and evil paths reminiscent of New Vegas's NCR or Legion, Obsidian assured us that there's much more variety in your story besides just these two core paths. Your choices along your journey, how you complete quests, who lives and dies, how you yourself play will all be highlighted in the end of your game. Apparently after completing your journey you'll be treated to a series of slides in classic Fallout fashion that tell your unique story and path throughout the world. I'm definitely looking forward to comparing my end with the rest of the gang and discussing how each of our own unique characters and playstyles change the results. This takes me to the primary option why the game is so appealing, the philosophy of player choice. Though we've yet to see the visuals of character creation and perk trees, we know that this is a key focus. There will be a letter-based perk system like Fallout Special, and plenty of ways to enhance and develop your character as you play. This play as you want philosophy really opens the door for us and everyone else playing to bring their own character into the world and have the world shape them in return. The introduction of the floor system is a neat one that works well for both our own brand of storytelling through character builds and fun happenstance. For instance, dying to a certain type of creature multiple times, say a pesky raptodon, can manifest in your character as a flaw. You'll be able to accept or decline this, but taking the negative stat will also give you a positive one in return that changes the way you tackle encounters with that creature, substance or environment going forward. Leonard Boyarsky has said that the inspiration for this system was role-playing and the idea of being able to make your character the flawed hero overcoming challenges instead of your classic endgame unkillable and maxed out superhuman. You'll still be able to do that if that's how you see your character, but it's all about ensuring that you'll be able to form a deeper level of role-playing with the characters you play. As an extra level of challenge for those looking to take their character's role-playing story to a new level, the game will feature a supernova difficulty, which means you'll be forced to take any flaws that pop up, but you can take more of them and also offering permadeath for your companions. Obsidian has also been very open about the fact that you'll be able to make your own decisions even if those decisions are becoming a murderous psychopath. You'll be able to kill quest givers and civilians, side with the evil faction and make your own fortune in the world. This level of freedom also extends to the companions that join you on your journey. Drawing from the classic sci-fi ensemble, you'll be able to recruit them by completing missions and choose which ones to bring with you when you're leaving your hub ship. The character relationships and abilities will factor in heavily to the way you play your story. From what we've seen, these characters don't always follow your lead either, interjecting in conversation and even being able to lead your crew should you opt into a more passive role during missions. You can even cause them to leave you with your decisions should they not like what you choose, do or say. Depending on the type of character you play, you can also increase the strength and resilience of your troop through stats, choosing exactly the dynamic that you want to have with your crew. As an aside, Obsidian seems to have learnt quite a bit about gunplay in games over the years. So far, from the gameplay shown, the shooting looks smoother than that of previous Fallout games, but we have to wait to play it for ourselves to confirm. There also seems to be plenty of options for both gun and melee oriented playstyles, which should keep gameplay varied. We've also seen quite a variety of options for melee. There's the Inferno Scythe, which can be modified into different types of damage like Corrosive and the Science Weapon, Mandibular Rearranger, which slows enemies 
eyes and has the zany effect of shrinking and rearranging the faces of those hit by it. Ultimately, the legacy of Obsidian is a driving force for my confidence in this game. Knights of the Old Republic 2 and Fallout New Vegas are still regarded as classics in the game's industry, and their recent success with the isometric role-playing game series Pillars of Eternity doesn't diminish that reputation. With the talent of Leonard Boyarsky and Tim Kaine, and the support of Microsoft and Private Division, we're hopeful that Outer Worlds will be a new classic in the RPG space. We cannot wait to burst out of cryosleep and explore the Halcyon system and deliver you all plenty of videos covering the lore, character builds, and guides. And that's it, a look at some of the recent news and our thoughts on The Outer Worlds. If you are as excited as we are, remember to subscribe to the channel in preparation for our full Fudge Muppet treatment, and let us know what parts of the world and characters you'd like us to explore in the lead up to the release. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks so much for watching. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.